Foot Clan, you do not want to miss a minute of this show. We have two really big announcements at the top of the show, and then we get into those wide receivers beyond the top ten, have some debates, discussions. Jay Grizz is here. Don't miss a minute. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the episode. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, April 21st. Excited to be with you. Mike Wright is here. Hello. Oh, that was nice. That was very nice. Good evening. It was a perfect volume. You are a late night news anchor with that voice. I, it is always and funny now, how they have those. the news. Why, why did we decide that was the voice? I don't know. Like that's a good question. I mean, it, we established. Why do we wear ties, Mike? I mean, I, uh, well, I've been asking that question for a long time. <laughs> Those things are ridiculous. I don't. I do not understand. Like, hey, you know what'll make you look real good? Tie this thing around your neck so you feel kind of like you're choking. And that uh, was the is the uniform so that then, you can be uniform and have it pointing downwards. Look, there's a lot of questions that we don't have time to answer here today, but we we will answer. That's some. on my new podcast that's coming no. out. <laughs> life's big questions it's with called, mike why tie why tie oh, okay <laughs> mike wright is here jay grizz filling in for jason he is still recovering and um and technological difficulties yeah yeah it was a little bit of that we uh yeah you know you, you're getting better from an illness and you need a mute button and yeah you do and then uh what we do have brooks back in the building hey oh and Al Borland is here. What's up? In the ball pit. Uh, uh, how'd it feel? It felt all right. All right. Uh, we've got a lot on today's show. Really excited to be with you. Early wide receiver rankings part two. So we get into some very interesting names on our uh, early consensus rankings episodes. And so I think there'll be some debates today. And maybe, Mike, you can talk me into actually trusting some wide receiver twos on today's show. You got to do it eventually. Uh, which is what I call all the starting wide receivers for like the bears and stuff like that. Uh, that's, see. that's actually nice of you to say that. <laughs> Byron Pringles is like, Oh, all right. <laughs> but, uh, I'm a real boy. We have a couple of big announcements. Are we, are we getting into them? Let, we're getting <laughs> into them. <laughs> get the trumpet out. So the first big announcement is, and you might've seen it on our social media, we posted it yesterday, but we will be back with the party room. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what am I talking about? Last year, we were on Spotify Green Room with live shows each and every week, and we are back for three more years with yeah, baby. Spotify Live. That is what it is now called. They've, they've changed the name from Spotify Green Room to Spotify Live. We're going to kick it off going live on NFL Draft Day. And so you can join us at 7 p.m. Eastern on the 28th, one hour before the draft, exclusively on Spotify Live for that live event. And so you can follow us on Spotify if you want to listen in. That's the nice thing. Now you can just yes. follow us in the Spotify app and you'll get notice when the live event is there. Yeah, you can come listen to the party room. But if you want to party, like participate, you want to party participate in the right. party right then you have to grab the spotify live app that is correct so um we are also working with spotify this year and one of the questions that has come up and i understand why sure is are you only going to be on spotify now nope and that's not the case we're actually the first um ad sales deal with spotify that has ever been non-exclusive so you appropriately have wondered that because a lot of the deals that they've done in the past, it has been pulling all of the resources just onto the Spotify app and that's exclusive to the platform. Nothing is changing about this show. You can listen where you want to listen. You can watch it on YouTube. 
nothing about the show yep. format is changing. Um, that was so important to us as we navigated where we were going to work and with what partners, uh, because this show is about the audience. I mean, this show is about you, the fantasy player, and we are very protective of it, and we want you to have that same great experience. So you're not going to notice anything. This will be the last time you hear anything about it. And um, But we're very excited, very mm-hmm. excited to be working with them and to be back on Spotify Live. Those live rooms are just It's so conducive for fantasy football to participate with the audience, to answer questions, to have all the kinds of fun that we have here with the three of us with you. And so please join us on that illustrious draft day. Oh, yes. And then I have one more announcement. Yes. I I wasn't sure how you wanted to handle this. I don't even know how to handle it. Okay. Our fearless leader, Andrew Holloway. (laughs) The first. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That is my formal tie. Esquire. That's the name I go by with a tie on. Our dude is about to become a published <laughs> author. Andy is putting out a, a, a children's book. That's right. Uh, it's called My Football Family. The, the entire footballer's family is extremely excited for him. Been backing him this whole way. And that bad dog, which is, it's a, we've all read it. The, the, the the story is incredible. It's very touching. The art is amazing, and it will be available for pre order. This is where you take over because I don't know this stuff. It's right now, right now, right now. <laughs> you can go to myfootballfamily dot com. I'm so excited about this project. It's awesome. Um, we, you know, we're all family guys here. You know, we all have kids, and every football fan, uh, every mom and dad wants to include their kids in their passions and, and loving football is our passion. So, um, that is the inspiration for this book was our own family and the way that we, uh, try to bring the kids into the equation, whether as fans of a team or playing fantasy, all of that stuff. And so I'm so excited for you guys to see this project. It is a passion project. I've been working with some great people at, at, uh, roaring book press. And so, you can check all that out, learn more about the book, and you can pre-order it. And the, the special thing right now, since this is the first announcement, is that um, you can go to myfootballfamily.com to figure out. You can buy it everywhere. You can buy it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Pre-order it there. But Barnes & Noble is doing a very special pre-order discount right now. So I believe it's like 25% off the pre-order price if you get it there. Like I said, all the details on the website. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, it was a you, joy to write. You absolutely will enjoy it. And if you know anything about books, pre-orders do matter. We're trying to get our man as a New York Times bestseller oh. over here, people. Well, my, MyFootballFamily.com. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Mike. That was very kind of you. Uh, join the foot.com's the community, UltimateDraftKit.com if you want to get in on that. But we got some big, big news to talk about. News and notes from around the league. Oh, 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 oh man. It's that Debo drama. We got that Debo. Brooks, we got Debo drama. Yes, we do. What? What is happening in the NFL? I don't know. But I love it. I love it. It's very exciting. Jeff Darlington spoke to Debo Samuel, reporting from ESPN. He has told the 49ers he would like to be traded. The 49ers, from what is being reported, have made many efforts to extend Debo Samuel. He has been unwilling to engage in those offers. So maybe money's not the root of the issue. Correct. Uh, There could be issues with how he's being used. And I started to think about this right before the show. Like, why, Debo, why would you? You're utilized by an offensive genius, Kyle Shanahan. But... How does how do, do contracts work in the NFL? And I started thinking, well, you know, tight ends that are used like wide receivers get paid tight end money. Correct. And so I'm wondering if this whole you got to be our running back because all of our running backs are hurt, you you expose Debo to more long-term physical harm. Yes, you do. And you reduce the numbers that he would get paid as a wide receiver. So I wonder how much, and then you do have a transition at quarterback. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say Debo's running away from Trey Lance. Right. But he totally might be. <laughs> um, but this is a humongous story because he was a f- one of the best fantasy players. 
which uh, the, you can join Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams, who have changed teams. And here's Debo, and it seems like he's not going to be back with the 49ers. Yeah, you have a clear shift last year when it uh, when it happened. Uh, from weeks one through eight, he was he he saw eighty targets, and in that time, he saw six carries. Then the San Francisco 49ers like, well, we need you. We need a man back there. And then from week nine on, 80 carries and 53 targets. Now, I know that players want to play and they want, you know, they want the ball in their hands. But if you are a wide receiver and you had 80 targets over the first eight weeks, and then that number has to drop down to 53 because you're getting 80 carries and you are destroying your body to do so. I Perhaps he doesn't really want to do that because, as you said, Andy, money is not the problem. And imagine being that – imagine being Debo Samuel right now. And I'm sure San Francisco uh, – I would think that their contracts are fair. Like they're trying to give him a lot of money. And he's saying, no, I like someone is walking up to you with a piece of paper and says, if you sign this, you will, have, you will inherit generational wealth for like, that will be passed down for ages. You'll, it'd be really difficult to spend this amount of money. And he's saying, nah, man, I'm good. I'd what, like to go somewhere else. Well, and what he's really saying is uh, your money is no good to me, but their money will be because, right, of course, because Tyreek had the same story, right? He knew he was getting the bag. Devante, they offered him a contract. Devontae Adams ends up getting it from the Raiders. And this is so, like, the implications of this potential move are vast. Like, I mean, by the time you're listening to this, maybe something else has happened in this story. But, you know, the 49ers are not going to be better without Debo Samuel. Brandon Ayuk's going to be thrust into uh, a role that, you know, one season he seemed okay to handle it, and the other season right. he didn't. You're going to have a new quarterback. You're going to have George Kittle hype start to grow if Debo's out of there. Uh, running back room, there's going to be, uh, uh, you know, and and what did they do in the draft? They don't have, from if they don't have a draft pick for a long time, but they might have some draft picks if Debo gets moved. And are they another destination for a wide receiver in that situation? Oh, yeah, they would have to. Uh, they would absolutely have to do that. I'm trying to pull up what picks do they? Actually... I, I feel like they're in the 50s. Their first pick is in the 50s. 60s. So oh, round gosh. one, they have no pick because they so, they traded up for their backup quarterback. Uh, and then they're and they have a, a second and two thirds. So at sixty one, there's potential that s an interesting wide receiver is there uh, if they somehow don't get a first. But whoever trades for Debo will have to pay up because he's he's still very young. Two more things, Mike. One, I want to make a prediction on where you think he might end up. Obviously, money is going to play a big part of that, and. The Jets do seem to me like the front runner since they were in contention for Tyreek Hill. Yeah, it's hard not to take the chalk here because the Jets have made it clear they want somebody. They've made it clear they're willing to trade draft capital. They have it. They've got money. So that makes sense. And, and I know that players do like the the Jets aren't the greatest team, but for NFL players to be in the New York market those things make sense and there's other money to be made up there and then the second thing is i guess just this kind of reflection on like i blame none of these wide receivers for the decisions oh, no. they're making oh no so Devonte, tyreek debo however exactly the same way that tom brady was a joy for the patriots general manager to navigate contracts with that is happening with cooper cup in los angeles because he is just as worthy of an extension just as worthy of a contract, and he's come out and basically said, yeah, you have to find something that works for both sides, which is just not normal, but it is a pathway for a roster like the Rams or the previous Patriots when these players have that kind of behind-the-scenes negotiation and it's not done all out in public. Um, you know, Debo, Debo deserves to get paid. He had an incredible season, but uh, this was just kind of came out of nowhere. It was almost like a joke, right? We kept saying, what other player might end up doing this? And here's Debo, and he may have a new team. Right. Uh, do you go and pursue Brandon Ayuk right now in a dynasty? Um, George Kittle. I think George Kittle's value is will not change. Uh, I mean, he 
trying to trade for him is very, very difficult since he's one of the elite tight ends who's actually still young enough that he could be on your roster for a while. And making the preemptive call on Brandon Ayuk, I think it's an okay decision to, to, to make. What do you put the chances of the trade happening? Because like for, for I don't every, think he plays for the 49ers. Okay, so, so you, I'm, I'm like ninety percent. Because we've we've had stuff like this before. Yeah, and even though we're talking about Debo's turning down money, it's still quite, it's still quite the uh, the fixer of problems when money right when he yeah. starts to increase sure. to a point where Debo is like, ah, let's okay. guarantee yeah. all of that contract. Hey, okay, okay, fine. I love San Francisco. I'll be back. Uh, I I put it very high as well that uh, that the trade happened. So, in in, in Brandon Ayuk did succeed his rookie season when Debo was off the field. And I don't think Debo is going to be better somewhere else unless that somewhere else is the Kansas City Chiefs, which is also a rumored destination. Just because of the unique way that he's used, I think a lot of that does have to do with how Shanahan gets the ball in his hands. Yeah, I mean his rookie season over fourteen yards of uh, a catch. A redonkulous over 18 yards a catch this year. That was he's not going to sustain that. But I think that if you force feed Debo targets, even if they're you know Zach Wilson targets, I think that he can still be a solid fantasy player. He won't be if he goes to the Jets. You're not looking at Debo as a top five right, guy, but still top 12. But but still a wide receiver one. Well, know. and then Elijah Moore discussions. Well. Yep. We'll have, to, we'll have to talk about all that if something happens, depending on where he goes. Jarvis Landry has visited with the Saints. This happened uh, yesterday. Turns 30 in November. The depth chart right now, Michael Thomas, Marquez Callaway, Traquan Smith, Deontay Harris. Hardy. Yeah, Hardy. De yeah. Deontay Hardy now. Yeah, right? he's he had, uh, I don't know if he recognizes that yet, but his official name is Deontay Hardy. And then uh, they have pick 16 and 19, and a rumored destination for a wide receiver has been the Saints quite a bit. So, you know, I'm not excited about that destination for Jarvis Landry. It seems like the sunsetting home, in my opinion. Almost, almost when the, you know, Emmanuel Sanders started to sign with a new team every year, it feels like he may be heading that direction. It's just hard to find fantasy value if Michael Thomas is going to be above him and then maybe a rookie. Right. I And... And and obviously like Alvin Kamara. Jameis is is a, I think a competent quarterback, but I don't know that you're going to have consistent fantasy value from multiple pass catchers for that team. Okay, I don't think we have any other news, Brooks. Any other top tier wide receivers send you any text messages saying they don't like where they're at? Nothing yet. Hmm. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know what happens there. What a wild off season this has been let's take a real quick break and then we'll jump into some wide receiver rankings all right so uh before i do that i did get an update in that amount of time in that very quick break it's been reported that the 49ers have zero in <laughs> zero intention of trading debo samuel yeah. So, uh, again, we're recording this in the afternoon on Wednesday. You're listening to it Thursday morning. So, if there's five more news stories that break, I apologize. But, like you said, money can go a long way. Maybe zero intention comes with like a, we have zero intention of trading you, and then they slide a check across the table. I remember when the Seahawks were not going to trade Russell Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, You're not going to trade anybody until you trade them. Can we just swap them all? Can, like... Can DK Metcalf and Debo just get swapped? And then, you know, all of these guys on these fifth year just swap and then the new team signs them because they don't want to sign the guy they got? I mean, that's the... Like, Change of scenery contract? I mean, you do have... You would have a very disgruntled wide receiver, but he's on the last year of his rookie deal. You can franchise him uh, after and, Or that. threaten to franchise him yeah. if, if he doesn't sign something. So, I mean, it's not like the 49ers have to trade him, but they also... Maybe they're just playing the game of they want more demand. All right. Right before we jump into wide receivers, I want to remind people, if they were with us last year, they know about it. But next week is <sighs> Ultimate Draft Week. Oh. We're here, Mike. We are The NFL Draft is upon us. We're going to be breaking down 
Uh, rookies making our predictions about where they're going to go, breaking down the draft. It's going to be fun. Brooks, are you looking forward to this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is the It might be possible to simulate Brooks with a single button. <laughs> it might be. If I have a button that just said, oh, yeah, I think we could get by with Brooks not would, being here I'd for go, a, a game or two. I think I'd go two. You want the awe and the yeah. Oh, separately? Yeah, sometimes you want to just hit a yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, are we going back to the punishment of the glamour shot? Oh, for the predictions? We'll have to figure that out. Well, Jason's not here, so he abstains. And uh, you and I can make a decision right now. I mean, the glamour shot was, it took a little time, but it was delightful. You you were the loser last year. I was. So, yes, I will say yes. We're going back to the glamour shot. <laughs> I was the loser because I refused to believe the 49ers were stupid enough to trade up for Trey Lance. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's do that again, and then we'll uh, send it off to a listener Yeah. after we stare at it for a while. Absolutely. You'll have to do a different pose, though, this year when you lose. I've got many poses. Don't worry about that. Ultimate draft week next week. Don't miss Tuesday's show. Don't miss Thursday's show. And then we're live in the afternoon on Thursday, so it's all about the draft next week. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And, Mike, you said this. Nobody knows what the crap is going on. Nobody. Uh, the draft, Certainly not us. The, the draft community on Twitter. I mean, I'm, you're seeing things that are all over the place. I have seen. Uh, Four different quarterbacks as the first quarterback. Yeah, like, you know, Malik Willis was trending for a, quite a while as he's going to be the number one guy. And then it was. But Desmond Ritter. And then, well, then it was, oh, we're back to Kenny Pickett. He, the, the Carolina Panthers are going to be locked into Pickett. Baby hands, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and his, and his very small hands. <laughs> and then a mock draft came out that, no, in fact, Atlanta is going to move up for Desmond Ritter. And then I saw one recently that the Saints used their firepower to move up and get Matt Corral in the top six. And it's, and it's like it is – as fun as like the off season has been for just how unpredictable these signings and trades have been, the draft is equaling that with the, of the chaos. Just so, just embrace the chaos. I've seen the Cardinals projected to draft six different wide receivers. Right. I mean, it's like it, that's another position that is going to have huge implications. And the teams with the most vacated targets are teams like the Chiefs and the Packers, who have huge opportunities with great quarterbacks. Right. I can't wait. It's going yes, to be exciting. so fun. All right, let's talk rankings. Wide receivers. I didn't miss anything there on Ultimate Draft Week, did I, Brooksy? No, sir. Okay. I didn't know there was something else that was going on. You're yeah, not, are you eligible for the glamour shot? No. You're not making any predictions? No. Hmm. What if we all tie and then Brooks has to do it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I wait, it's been said. <laughs> it's been said. I mean, nightmare zone. You just you just put Brooks into a pure multi week panic. What do you mean you quit, Brooks? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting really warm over here. Oh, it's gonna be uh you know be warmer in that fur jacket you wear for that glamour shot. All right, we just talked about the early wide receiver top ten on the Tuesday show. And that was Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Debo, A.J. Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, and then Tyreek Hill and Mike Evans were tied to round out the top 10. So today we're going to get into the next group, which has uh, you know, less consensus agreement. But we'll begin with C.D. Lamb at 11. He's 23 years old. We're actually pretty similar on where we see C.D. Sure. Which is uh, at the tail end of the wide receiver one zone. He was 79 for 1,106 last year. No Amari Cooper. And, in fact, 181 targets at the wide receiver position are gone. Amari Cooper's 19% target share. Cedric Wilson's 10%. And Malik Turner had 3%. So there is... The, the argument for CD that there's opportunity for him to take the next step. But then there are concerns about CD when he vanishes for stretches of time, when he hasn't yet made that, that jump, right? You haven't seen the Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase type of numbers from him. And so do you see a wide range of outcomes from CD Lamb as opposed to a lock here in the top 12? 
Yeah, I think that's why we all have him ranked around here because it's the projections are very wide for him. I mean, you have a a he had a thirty one percent bust rate, and that is not ideal from someone that last year was he was supposed to take the jump. Like, do remember last off season, see the CD Lamb hype was was everywhere, and in this show included. We were very excited. He was an amazing prospect. It was and supposed to be time. Coming into year two, we're, we're seeing wide receivers make the jump more often in year two than year three. And he like he was good. I mean, it's like 79 for 1,100 yards, is, that is, that's a good season. But when you disappear, as he did frequently, especially you know to finish the season, goodness gracious, talk about sputtering to the finish from week 14 on, never finished inside the top 30 at the position. I don't but, think I want CD Lamb as my one. Okay. I, even though he's ranked here, the final season stats, I have him at 11, the hope, you know, early rankings. But I don't think I am targeting or would be content with him as my wide receiver one. It's it's a fair point, but the Amari Cooper leaving is, like, that's the big ticket where – not not often do we have these wide receivers in this scenario where you are projecting a real big jump and it doesn't happen. And then you feel like, oh, well, now i got to double down the next year, even though nothing has changed for this wide receiver. But why do I feel safer that Dalton Schultz is going to be that oh, guy? Oh, Dalton Schultz, dude, the, <laughs> the doctor is I mean, the doctor is going to be so good. 44% of targets inside the 10 are vacated in Dallas. Yep. I can't – I mean, not that CD can't take advantage of that too, but, man, Dalton Schultz feels like he's going to soak them up. And it's going to be great, but Amari Cooper's gone. Cedric Wilson is gone. Right. Malik Turner is gone. Michael Gallup is the the guy they brought back. He may be gone for the first do few you weeks. Get we don't know. Do you get panicky about CD if they invest one of those early draft picks? No. Okay. Uh, because they, they need somebody else, and – it might. I, I think it can help CD Lamb. And like, is he is he going to go back and be a slot wide receiver? Which again, there's nothing terribly wrong with being a slot wide receiver. It just it is. You need so much more volume if that's your true position on the field. You need much more volume to overcome the lack of big plays. T Higgins comes in at twelve, which feels scary to me to put him there. Sure. Um, he finished at wide receiver 22, but the headline here, from week nine on, he was the wide receiver 11. So he was right around this range from week nine on when Joe Burrow kind of you know, found himself recovering from the injury. Um, he had a ton of 100-yard 100, 100 receiving games. And, you know, he finished with a higher target share and red zone target share than Jamar Chase. Sure. And so to me, this is that classic situation where Jamar Chase is going to get drafted ahead of T. Higgins everywhere. And how far down will T. Higgins go, and how much of a value will that end up being? Here's like where I, I mean, Higgins will still go very high. In, I think he won't go ahead of several of these guys we have coming up. Okay, I mean that that's fair. I'm trying to look here. You know, of what is the actual overlap of T. Higgins having a successful game and and uh, Jamar Chase having one? And I'm talking, I don't think there's a lot of overlap. And I'm talking during the back stretch where. Burrow was fully back from the injury. Jamar Chase is full Joe. Yeah, like everything is is clicking for the Bengals as they were about to make their playoff run. And you have week fourteen. Jamar was the wide receiver four with Higgins as the wide receiver twenty one. And then week sixteen against Baltimore when Higgins <laughs> went nuclear. That was the thirty seven and a half fantasy points. That was the twelve for one ninety four and two. And Jamar, so he was the number one guy, and Jamar Chase was still the wide receiver fourteen on that particular week. So it, it's not that these guys can't have success. We we don't have a complete, you know, Venn diagram of of no overlapping. So he's just he is so scary here <laughs> because I feel like we like we know who T Higgins is. Where Jamar Chase coming and doing that as a rookie, you don't know what the true ceiling is for him. Where T. Higgins having a nice year of seventy four thousand yards, seven eleven hundred yards essentially, and six touchdowns. Like that's a good season, and he missed a bunch of games on top of that. 
Yeah, and, and it was the back half of the year that gives you more confidence that he can slide in and they could have two top 12 wideouts. Yeah. But maybe it's more of an indictment that we have him ranked here on these guys later down in the list, and this can be debated. Keenan Allen at 13, 30 years old now, and if there was ever a you-know-what-you're-getting situation, it's Keenan Allen, right? I have him the lowest. He finished as wide receiver 14 last year. I have him at 17. Jason at 13. Mike, you have him coming up a little bit. I think he missed the game. But you get consistency. Mm -hmm. You don't get explosive games as often. And you don't get a bunch of touchdowns. He had six last year, 1,100 yards on 100 catches. So there's it's not a knock against Keenan Allen. It's an acceptance of what he is. Sure. And so you bring back Mike Williams. There's rumors about them drafting somebody. Austin Eckler is a big focal point of the offense and Keenan will be as well. But do you feel, let me ask you this. Do you feel more comfortable with CD or Keenan as your one? Oh goodness gracious. Cause they're so different. They are so different for Keenan Allen. You know, historically speaking since 2017, you can essentially just, just lock in 1100 yards and six touchdowns. That's what you're going to get from Keenan Allen. <laughs> as, as we're reminded of, don't sit me, uh, don't sit me gate. But like that's a and that's that's solid. I want that on my team. But to feel like at this point of his career, you know, eight years in for Keenan Allen, he's great. But his even with Justin Herbert being, you know, Nuclear. one of the new franchise quarterbacks, the new faces of the NFL. I mean, I don't know how you in in good conscience predict or project the guy is going to score more than eight touchdowns because he literally never has. He also has finished, and this is both a compliment but a reality check, he's finished 14 at the position for two consecutive years. The year before was eight. The year before was 12. So he has one career year inside the top eight. So I think it's, you know, he's the perfect two. Like if he slipped yeah. down in the draft and he ends up being your wide receiver two, that's the kind of stability I like at that position where you can go. Maybe it's Tyreek. Maybe you end up with Tyreek and Keenan Allen. Sure. And that would be all right. Yeah. So do you feel like Keenan Allen is one of those guys that you are, you're targeting more if you like, if you don't take the running back in the first, because you're like, you're just, okay. The team makeup of this is I'm going to have multiple great wide receivers and yeah. then figure out the running back position a little bit later. Yeah, I mean, he's a lot like uh, Diggs light to me, right? Where I think Diggs has a little bit more of the potential for double, di double digit touchdowns, but realistically, both guys give you consistent weeks, heavily targeted, go to third down receivers, but we'll move on here. 14 is Jalen Waddle. Uh, Mike, you have him at 14 Yeah, on the dot. I have him at 12, Jason at 15. I mean, the, the question... This is, this is tough. The question that I get peppered with the most based on initial rankings is how on earth would you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle inside your top 15 and not have two of there? Sure. Because how does that happen? How does Jalen Waddle manufacture enough? He had a thousand yards, six touchdowns last year, finished at 16. So 14, you know, taking a step forward. He's in his CD lamb year, so to speak, right? Where he's coming into year two. Most receptions ever for a rookie wide receiver. Is that true? Yep. Most ever. 104. Does he get to 100 this year? I With think Tyreek so. Hill arriving. I think so. You do have, you have Tyreek there, but you have a completely different offensive uh, philosophy. So I think that that can overcome the, the, the fact that he will be the two. And let's, let, me, let me ask you this. Okay. Is there any chance? I'll let you ask me this. Is there not not any chance? That's that's hyperbolic. Percentage chance Jalen Waddle outproduces Tyreek Hill for fantasy football. Wow. Wow, that is uh what what format? <laughs> Half. Come on, man. Okay. Right. Half I'm PPR. I'm just I'm just delaying. Um the scoring format I, of I champions. Only, I, I think twenty percent. Okay. Do you do you have it higher than that? No, I would not. Okay. I would not. Uh, there, there, there's the chance, but you're just talking about so many big plays from Tyreek. Like they're, they're, they're going to happen whether or not 
Tua is a great deep ball thrower, they're still going to happen because Tyreek can take anything to the house. And it's so strange of spending a that high a pick on a wide receiver who is lightning fast. He only sees 10 deep targets over the course of the year. And I mean, you do what you need to factor in is just like uh, the other wide receivers for Tyreek's former team, the, the Chiefs, if Tyreek houses a 50-yard touchdown, that's a lot of fantasy points and opportunity that Jalen Waddle now will no longer have the opportunity. Uh, yeah, I mean, double opportunity, whatever. But if, but if Tyreek <laughs> scores quickly, then like the that hurts over. Waddle. Yeah, and he's going to pick defenses apart on some shorter routes. And that's how he'll be used. And Mike McDaniel's a good head coach, so you hope that he puts him in a, a position where – if the big plays go to Tyreek, then the, the volume goes to Waddle. And, you know, percentage chance that Waddle has more total receptions than Tyreek Hill. What do you think? High. Very high, right? Yeah. All right. DK Metcalf at 15, another wide receiver with some trade rumors in the offseason. And started probably by him. Started by DK <laughs> Metcalf. At 24 years old, do a contract. I'm at 15. Jason and Mike at 17. It was a disastrous week. 10 on for DK last year. Mm -hmm. You can blame Russell Wilson's bad hand on the return. You can blame uh, a lot of things, but ultimately a tale of two halves, which was what happened in uh, 2020 as well. It's a pretty Seattle thing to do because it it's not just DK Metcalf. Russell Wilson loves to do it. Tyler Lockett. Now, do you also think Drew Locke will bring the kind of consistency to the table <laughs> that we've been missing for DK Metcalf? Um, no, but Geno Smith has been re-signed to the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, no. <laughs> like, is what are the chances that Drew Locke can beat out Geno Smith to be the starter? G like, DK had some success there uh, in the middle of the year where – where Geno Smith was the guy because Russell was hurt with the hand. His current best ball ADP, speaking of DK Metcalf, is the wide receiver 11. So we have him below that spot. But for a player with the, the prolific you know, ability, the touchdown ability that he had, which he saved his season with 12 touchdowns because he was under 1,000 yards, he was under 80 receptions, but he only had one game inside the top seven on a given week. So he had the third most... Um, uh, deep targets, but the most unrealized air yards. So lots of opportunities down the field that just you saw these games where they didn't connect. Yeah. So and in, so they were strange. So they said, you know what? They're not connecting. Let's get a let's get rid of the problem, Russell Wilson. Right. Of of course. So week six through eight, DK Metcalf. That was the games where Geno Smith played a hundred percent of uh, of the snaps for the quarterback position at Pittsburgh. DK was the wide receiver, 36, at 6 for 58. Not what you're hoping for, but you would get it. And then the wide receiver, 9, in two straight games against the Saints and the Jacksonville Jaguars on the back of of touchdowns. But I think that that should give you at least some hope. The The, uh, the red flags are very clear and very apparent. And, on, I mean, on top of those, the offensive philosophy of, of Pete Carroll – is not going to change. Like they were willing to trade Russell Wilson because they believe so much in establishing it and they think that that's the way to get it done. Okay. So I am very concerned about DK All right, uh, being yeah. terrible for fantasy or making us look stupid because he's fantastic. Well, tied at 16 on our initial wide receiver rankings, Deontay Johnson and Cortland Sutton. Now, some big disparities in our individual rankings here. Mike and I have Deontay at 14 and 15. Jason down at 24. Not here to defend himself. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and uh, his best ball ADP is 15. So that's kind of where he's going. Jason has him. I can tell. I'll make the Jason argument. Oh, I can, yeah, I can make it. Uh, it's called Mr. Biscuit. Yes, it is. So the, the truth is, is Deontay Johnson, there, there are players – in which a transition to a different quarterback is very easy to see them having success still. And Deontay's one of those players where it's high volume. Um, 
intermediate routes, short routes. Yeah, he's, he's a good route runner, so he's always open. Yeah, 169 targets, right? Right. And I'm not I'm not looking at this offense and saying, well, they're going to stop throwing the football. They have to throw the football. They have to throw the football to keep up in that division, which is going to be brutal. They're going to have to throw the football because their offensive line is still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And part of bringing in Mitch Trubisky was mobility. It was the ability to do everything that Big Ben couldn't do, which was evade the pocket. Look, maybe throw some interceptions, but he's still going to throw the ball a lot. So Deontay has to be on the other end of that. It's not going to be fixed by Chase Claypool putting up a, a high-volume season, right? Correct. And remember back when Mitch was a starting quarterback, he had Allen Robinson back. Remember the good old days when Allen Robinson ah, was, was uh, good for fantasy football? That's a good point. Both, so both of the years where Robinson was a top-12 wide receiver in 2019 and 2020, that was Mitchell Trubisky. He, Allen Robinson had uh, 150 or more targets in both of those seasons. Yes, Mitchell missed some games in 2020, but if you look at the actual splits, Robinson was better in the games where Trubisky was the quarterback. So we've seen him, we've seen Trubisky be willing to do the hyper targeting that we want so much from our quarterbacks. And Deontay Johnson is going to be a great friend to Trubisky because of the way that he plays where uh, like Claypool is a good wide receiver, but that's contested catches going down the field. That won't be the high volume. It'll still be Deontay. I agree. And the, uh, you know, you just get separation uh, yeah. on a consistent basis, which is, which is great. Um, I don't think I'd feel comfortable with him as my one, despite the fact he finished as my one last year. That's why he's ranked. Yeah, I, where he's I ranked. agree with that. Uh, and then Cortland Sutton, I'm the outlier here, right? Now, he is 14 on Jason's list, 16 on your list. I am at 23. And this is something where I, you know, part of me wanted to say, well, I'm just too low. But I'm also, I need to see it. Because it's been a really, really long time. And I know there have been injuries. I know there have been quarterback struggles. But in the career, which is now four seasons long, we haven't seen Cortland Sutton finish a season providing better than wide receiver 19 fantasy value for the, to for the whole year. And so do I think he's super talented? Yes. Do I think Jerry Judy's going to be involved? Of course. Tim Patrick, yes. The tight ends, the running game. So 23 could end up being too low on Cortland Sutton. I will freely admit that it could end up being too low. But that's where I have him slotted in right now because I'm just not – I think you guys are actually higher. I think that's the way it is because his consensus ranking elsewhere sure. is about 28. I got him at 23. And so um, there's there's different options there. I trust Russell. Right. It's just which guy's going to do it on which week. And I think Tim Patrick is so capable. Jerry Judy's so capable. I'm not sure which guy it's going to be. Yeah. For me, it's Nathaniel Hackett's coming in, you know, bringing that very pass friendly system. And Russell Wilson, who look, looking back at the consistency of fantasy wide receivers, even though I should say consistent end of year finish. So they, they definitely go hot and cold, but. Going all the way back down to 2015, he's had at least one top 15 wide receiver. I'm talking about Russell Wilson. In 2020, he had two top 10 guys, frequently has uh, supports a wide receiver one, and Cortland Sutton is great. He is a great player who has been put in a very difficult situation. So I'm betting on the offense and the quarterback and the talent of the wide receiver here, and I think that he comes through with a monster year. Now, you're still – two questions to follow up on Sutton before I move on. Um, one of them, it, it is a projection to say he will be the bona fide one. Yes. So there is that pos – that's a little bit of the risk built in with Cortland Sutton is that there could be someone that – from that offense that finishes higher than him. I The way I project it is more of a Sutton is a 1A, Judy is 1B. Yeah, like, okay. I, I love Fireball Jones. I just – I think he is the distant third or will become the distant that's third That's all option. people have ever thought about him. Yeah, that's, I mean it's it's just true. It's because his name his name's tried. Tim Patrick. It's yep. not Jerry Judy. There's no alliteration well, with Tim Patrick. Jerry Judy's a good name. Yeah, Tim Tim Patrick's a dentist, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Doctor Patrick. That's why, that's why we call him Fireball. Um, yeah, we need to. 
Does it change the ranking? I don't know. No. It what is the actual what is the actual range of outcomes for Sutton though in your mind then? So how high can he actually go if he's the if he if we're right, if he's the one? If, if he's can the, it can it be top ten? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, absolutely. And I think that his floor with Russell Wilson is actually very safe. I'm like yeah, it would shock me to see Cortland Sutton play the majority of the year and not be a top twenty four guy. Number eighteen. We built this city. Oh, baby. Forgot about the graphic on that oh, one. Oh, baby. Michael Pittman, Pity City. <sighs> you still got you're still hot and bothered by Mr. Yeah, Michael Pittman? I look I am very excited. Very well, excited for the addition by subtraction of the Indianapolis Colts. We have him at 18. Now, unfortunately, Mike, he is – Jason's my guy because Jason has him at 16. You have him at 18. That's all right. Um, the people know. 24 years old, finished as the wide receiver 15 last year, so we're all – our consensus ranking is below where he finished. Um, He's the number one guy for the Colts, and they have another quarterback, of course, every year. That must be, it must be hard on Michael Pittman, right? First three years in the league, just getting three different quarterbacks? Yeah, but now he's got, I think, a good one. Well, he started last year, weeks one through nine, as the wide receiver nine. But if you stuck with him and said, well, we've done it, he's graduated, he is a one, you got the wide receiver 30 over the back half of the year. Yeah, only two more decent weeks in that time, unless you played week 18. Now, uh, some might argue Matt Ryan, you know, you're going to get a top-tier wide receiver because Matt Ryan has always supported that. Sure. Roddy White <laughs> and Julio Jones were the two guys. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's still it's still difficult not to put a, and, li a little and, bit of that. And Calvin Ridley. Okay. So that I was mean, when Julio was still there, right? Uh, in 2020, yeah. I think he was. Uh, it, but the fact that it's three wide receivers that Matt Ryan has elevated to be a fantasy superstar. That's very encouraging. I'm not – I'm. we've got him ranked at 18. I'm not ready to rip the shirt yeah, off that's right. and that's proclaim right. that Michael Pittman is the next Roddy White or the next Calvin Ridley, but he is a really good player. And the 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 bet on, Matt, on Michael Pittman is – in a way, it is a bet on Matt Ryan, and I think the Colts are right. I think Matt Ryan still has – a couple years left where he can be a very productive player. What I think is interesting is I actually would be excited about Michael Pittman ending up my wide receiver too. Sure. Because making that bet at that wide receiver too, consistency has been a problem. On the website, the fantasyfootballers.com, we have player profiles. On those profiles, we have a consistency score. He's been a C, right? 47% of the time, he exceeds what we consider to be a usable benchmark at the wide receiver position of 10 and a half points. So that's less than half the time. So that is the hump he has to get over. And that's going to come with a quarterback that is more consistent than Carson Wentz, more consistent than what they've had there in the past. I think it will also help Michael Pittman for the, the evolution of his game. Like coming into this season, you know, was he, did, did the Colts view him as the, the guy, because T.Y. Hilton was still there. I know that T.Y. Hilton uh, missed a bunch of games in the beginning of the season because he was hurt, but you're saying in the in the process was the plan for the Colts, Hilton is still our featured guy, and then Michael Pittman's going to be a strong number two, and now he's the dude. Like Coming into this year... I think they knew it, it may because be. of how strong he started, but yeah, you're right. But, I mean, it's 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 more cemented. Right. I'll you give are, you the cement. Because you have, you have Ashton Doolin... Paris Campbell, if he can ever stay on the field, and they would they would not surprise me at all if they is that the current depth chart. Yes, uh, I'm. They didn't at, add some peripheral option this off season. I'm looking at our lads, and if maybe there's something I'm not remembering. Is Zach Pascal still there? Not according to our lads. I think he might have been trade, or he might have signed with somebody. Philly, yeah, he signed with Philly. Yeah, yeah. But so they're gonna draft somebody. Just depends on, you know, what. What round can they actually use a pick on a wide receiver? Um, okay, all right. Let's mo let's move on. DJ Moore at nineteen. Oh, gosh, guess what he finished last year, Mike? Nineteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even like talking about DJ Moore anymore. 
it just makes Any me more? sad. <laughs> Is that what you're trying yeah, not to say? I was trying not to, but it's no of, more, more. <laughs> instead of finding a different word, I just stopped talking. Just stopped talking. <laughs> Less more. I, I just trailed off. Less is more, Mike. Less is more. I mean, what can you say? 163 targets, 1,100 Dude yards. You can say sadness. Four touchdowns because four is his uh, required amount. It's ridiculous. And yet Sam Darnold is what he had to endure. And and this year there are there are four outcomes, okay? Still playing with Sam Darnold. Okay. Um, I don't like that. Yes, that that outcome. Here, let me. There are four possible outcomes. Still okay. playing with Sam Darnold. All right. mm-hmm. Okay. Outcome number two. They trade for Baker Mayfield. Okay. Okay. Ish. It's better than. <laughs> it's look. Can we can we all be in agreement that it's better than Darnold? Yes. Okay. That's all I need. Option three. They trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo. <laughs> yeah yeah okay i got a fourth option for you kenny pickett he's got those he's got baby hands so rookie it could be not Pickett. it could be another rookie but yeah so the four options none of those scream guaranteed top 19 right and that's the problem because the talent dj Moore deserves what sutton's getting now Yes, he does. Trade him away. But then he did, he just signed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did this to yourself, DJ. If there was ever a player that should have pulled the Debo. Yes. I don't like how you're using me. What do you mean? We're throwing you the ball 163 times. I don't like who's throwing me the ball. So, very talented. Can definitely give you explosive weeks. I mean, he had three top 12 weeks out of the gate last year. But... It's tough. It's tough to it's, see. And then you got Ben McAdoo, who I don't have confidence in. Uh, Hold on. Ben McAdoo. <laughs> ben Ma- He's the glue that was clearly missing from this offensive right. attack. I mean, to see DJ Moore's name on the yardage total since he came into the league just ranks crazy high in overall total yardage. And he's 300 plus receptions in. He just he's in the first four years. Yeah, I mean, players in his first four years with 300 plus receptions, he is dead last in receiving touchdowns. And as great as I believe DJ Moore is, and as getting over 1,100 yards and 90 plus catches, that's fantastic. But if you're ending the season with four touchdowns, you're not giving people spike weeks, and, and you're, you're not just, getting 163 targets if McCaffrey's back. Sure. I don't think that total is going to, to hit. And you have to presume McCaffrey's not going to miss right now. Yeah. Amari Cooper at 20. Terry McLaurin at 21. Also wants a contract. Mike Williams at 22. Elijah Moore at 23. And Michael Thomas at 24. So out of that group, Mike Cooper, McLaurin, Mike Williams, Elijah Moore, Michael Thomas. Give me the the player in that group that has the highest upside. Well, the the highest upside is everything has to go completely right, and that would be Amari Cooper, and that means that somehow Deshaun Watson plays 17 games and is not suspended for his his off-the-field garbage, which I don't think is going to happen. I think that he'll miss games. But if you're just talking clear upside, somehow legal challenges get pushed to the future – for for Deshaun Watson, it's easily Cooper. The player that I has, we have a big disparity on that I have ranked higher, Mike Williams in Los Angeles, he got a three-year deal, I believe. Yeah, he got paid. And there, this does feel like maybe the year that it's kind of definitively the transition is going to happen because of uh, the team's confidence in what he can do. And obviously last year started out and was absolutely on fire, then disappeared, then kind of came back. But I think Mike Williams' ceiling is actually exceptionally high. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. The He can go over that nine touchdown total for oh, sure. Yes, he can. But let's let's talk philosophically about Mike Williams. Mike Williams comes out the first three weeks of the season and does something not the same as last year because that was absolutely ridiculous to have four total touchdowns in the first three games. A wide receiver 16-9-1. If he does that, 
are you still going to be like, yep, this is it. This is the new normal for Mike Williams. Or are you going to want to bail out and trade him high because I, this I, has happened before? I think I I think the the guess, possibility of it happening more consistently is such a great advantage for where you have to draft him that it's worth believing because he's attached to one of the top three quarterbacks in football and you know he was banged up that was part of the story and he does he will be banged up that's again. a part yeah because he doesn't know how to land yes he's he's full like uh, Michael Pittman Mike Williams Drake London coming out they go up they make the catch and then they come down and it looks painful but I just think you know he finished at wide receiver 10 right and his ADP is not going to be wide receiver 10 so that's kind of my point yes it's spiky but when you're when you are going to be competing against Russell Wilson Patrick Mahomes uh, Derek Carr you know you got Devonte Adams in that division now it's going to take a lot of Herbert magic at the end of these games and I think Mike Williams got paid because they expect him to be that guy I th I think he also part of him getting paid was he was in the right place at the right time in the right market not that he doesn't deserve a huge contract, but I think that those uh, variables were in play for him. And we, we need more than 21% of the targets. Like, if we can get that number up. I'll work on it. <laughs> call, I'll call, call some people. Call some people. Yeah. Because if we can get him up at 25 with Keenan Allen, then that's a much better Make situation. some calls, Brooksy. Make some calls. Al, I don't know if you have any contacts or or anything of that nature, but can you make some calls too? I'll call people. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Sir, this is Pizza Hut. <laughs> what do you uh, <laughs> send a pie over to my guy, Mike? <laughs> All right. Uh, that is going to do it for today's show. A couple quick reminders at the end. Um, first of all, next week, Ultimate Draft Week. Yes. Ultimate Draft Week is coming. Predictions, uh, glamour shot punishment, live events around the draft. And so very excited about us finally getting to that point because after the draft happens and the depth charts are filled out, there's your real lay of the land, right? Yep. Yes. So these rookies are going to be very exciting, especially at the wide receiver position. So I cannot wait for that ultimate draft week next week. And you can learn more about that. You can go on our social media uh, at the FF ballers on Twitter. You can follow us on YouTube. We'll be doing a live event over on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And if you are so inclined, you moms and dads out there, yes, uh, you can pre order my football family right now. Go to myfootballfamily.com, check it out. It will be a very, very cool gift for your little ones. And Father's Day is not that far away. If, oh, if you want to pick go. that up for somebody, you know, I'm still, you said I'm. I'm a published author, yes. so I'm still learning the ropes. Yes, yes. Uh, so check that out, myfootballfamily.com. That'll do it. God willing, we'll have Jason and not a cardboard bear next week, right? Uh, uh, Jay Gris is just not bringing much to the table, Mike. I like him. Uh. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>